Uh, before we start, I want to make uh, sure that we understand some of the, of the rules uh, about the public, um, uh, public portion. During the, both the workshop and the meeting, we have public portion. Uh, the public portion during the workshop uh, is only um, the, the, the comments or the questions have to be uh, about something we discuss or there is in the agenda. Uh, during the meeting, uh, it's free for everybody to talk about anything they like. However, it's not going to be, be a discussion back and forth. Uh, members of the public can make a, a comment or can ask a question. After the public portion is closed, uh, if there is something to be answered, it will be answered. Uh, or if somebody wants a discussion, they're very much welcome to make an appointment. Uh, so we don't get too crazy here. Thank you. So let's review resolutions. Request to hold annual uh, lottery run 7-14-17 um, to sell newspapers on, say, on state corners 627-17. Um, on the 627-17. Okay. Oh, so the, the run is the, for the 7th, uh, for the 14th, and then the, the papers for the 27th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> request from Jamie uh, Rock to hold History Days Friday, July 7th, and Saturday, July the 8th, uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. Request from Farm Festival to suspend <coughs> open container law during Farm Festival. Seasonal hires for uh, DPW. NICOM payment, SICRA for WDW uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, improvements. You want to talk about that? Maybe? Yeah, if, if you look at the, uh, the bond resolution that's in your packet, you'll see the list of uh, mm -hmm. projects um, attached to each of the bond resolutions. Um, and those are the projects that were put together by the engineers. Again, this is being done because of uh, there are substantial grants out there right now. Mm -hmm. So they're putting that together along with the grant application that we've been working on uh, finalizing. They have to have it done by June 23rd. Uh, obviously, the, bigger, the biggest project is at the wastewater treatment plant under this program. Um, there's payment for up to 25% of the of the cost of the project with further incentives through places like National Grid that would incentivize you to do the projects. So, um. And this is, I mean, we all know that this is something we should do. We need, um, we are in great need of improvements and uh, we want actually to do it before we have any kind of problem or any kind of, uh, you know, situation that would be, um, Required by, by, by the state to um, give us in any kind of, you know, give us any kind of fines. The fines can be 3500 3, per day, and that's not a good amount. That's not something we want to pay. Uh, Rick, I said a question. Those bond resolutions are just part of the grant application. Correct. They have okay. to be bond resolutions in place, and they have to be sent with the application in order to qualify. Okay. So. Yeah, for the, um, the only thing that will not be in place by that time is the uh, uh, permissive referendum. You have to wait 30 days before you actually take action on that bond. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that won't be in place, but that's not, that's not an issue with the okay. application. <coughs> so it's the same secret for filtration improvements. Mm -hmm. $1.6 million bond resolution approval for the water plan and $4.8 million bond resolution approval for the wastewater treatment plan. Uh, now you know that we are in discussions with Dunkirk, with the city of Dunkirk, uh, about um, having some, uh, some kind of uh, share services. And, and that's something good, and, and Phyllis, you've been mm -hmm. there, so you know it's very promising. Um, so, um, but even so, we need to start making the improvements we need. And then you have the schedule of meetings for July to December 2017. And then Nussbaumer and Clark proposal for five hold repairs. 
Um, and just to let you know, what, what I did was I just, uh, if you look at that proposal, they went all the way through uh, managing the project. We actually cut it off at, um, at the design services, which is to update the report. God bless you. To update the report that's currently, whoops. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Um, yeah. um, update the report that they did back in 2013, I think it was. Uh, then, then to prepare the uh, construction documents and then uh, actually to attend the bidding that would take place afterwards and to review the bids and to recommend awarding the bid to a specific uh, contractor. Once you get past that, then you can get on to the next construction services phase. So there'll be a second resolution after those are done to approve the second phase of the, of the project, which is, again, construction services. You want somebody on the job that knows what's supposed to be done, making sure that it's being done correctly. Okay, then we have the Main Street Technical Assistance Grant. Uh, if you remember, we talked about it uh, last time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just the technical assistance. Um, we, the village is going to pay $1,000, and the, the state is giving us $20,000 to put together the, uh, the technical assistance. So um, it's um, a, a group of people, I suppose, that will go and uh, actually talk to the business owners, talk to the bank, and put the whole, um, the requirements for the grant together. They won't write the, the, the grant actually, but they will put the requirements of the whole uh, grant together. The reason we're doing that is because it's, it's really uh, very time consuming to do, and, and we don't know how uh, to do it ourselves. So I think for, for $1,000, um, it's a very good investment in the part of the village to have uh, these business owners um, give them the possibility to upgrade the whole building for 25% of the original price uh, money spent. Anybody? Yeah. Phyllis? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm reading. I was right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> That's fine. All right. And then we have the appointment of Douglas Bunch and Josh Seibert uh, as uh, dog wardens. We discussed that before. Yeah, that was part of your budget yeah. discussion. So they both yeah. get three thousand dollars stipends and, uh, in mileage for going to pick up dogs. And then we have schedule of band band concerts in the gazebo for two thousand seventeen. <coughs> yes. Um, award back a common uh, survey to Woodbury Pietro. So that's, that's part of, we're going back to the grant that we just <coughs> approved for the Barking Common, and there is a requirement to have uh, a survey done by a uh, company. Uh, we went out to Beats, and they gave us the best price. Uh, that's $2,400, if I'm not mistaken, right? Something yes, like yeah. Uh, now, this money is going to be paid back by the state, uh, but we have to put all the papers together, and that's the last paper we uh, were uh, waiting for. Right, and then seasonal positions for 2017 summer recreation program. Right. Now, uh, new business, we have the resignation received from Mark Rockman as trustee. We have an addition to active roles of fire department. <coughs> resignation from Paul Luce uh, from the zoning board as a zoning board member. And my recommendations are recommendation of Larry Barter to zoning board. Uh, with the resignation of Paul Luce, we needed another person. I thought Larry knows the, the, the villas quite well. He's willing to do it. Um, that's. Um, Excuse me, Mayor, have I had something to yes, please. Or new business? Um, I was about to do one of those. Um, the Fredonia Steelers DNF. A hockey team. Um, they won back-to-back -back mm -hmm. New York State championships. Uh, the city of Dunkirk has uh, 
had made signs made up, uh, and I was wondering if uh, the board would consider doing something like that, placing them at uh, the major entrances to the village, like at the throughway and that, yeah. as far as that, because it's an achievement that probably most teams will never made or will make again. And uh, I'd like to recognize them as being a I think that's a good idea. accomplishment. Yeah. I don't know how uh, somebody said Perry might have handled signs like that in the past. That might be something that he may handle. Mm -hmm. I know yeah, that well. usually comes through the street, street department. department. Yeah. I don't know the particulars on that. But. Can, you, can you ask him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's, uh, when he comes back from his conference, so. Yeah, thank you. Great. And that's a, that's a major uh, thing, so congratulations. Mm -hmm. Great accomplishment. Um, great thing. Uh, okay. What is the village master plan? Um, I don't know if Kara wants to talk about that or um, the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, well, I just, I, I, we, are you talking about my suggestion that we get someone to come in and do a, yeah, um, I think that we should need to look to hire someone. And what was that woman's name? She gave us that, she gave us her information. I can't oh. remember her, Galster Lori. Enterprises. Oh. Lori. Lori yeah. Galster. Yeah. Oh. Um, I would like us to consider hiring her to, because we've got all these ideas that we want to do, all these grants that we want to apply for, and all these things that we need to move forward on, but we need someone to really help us with the plan. We're just sort of like, I don't want to say flying blind, but because we do have a lot of help, thank goodness for the people who are helping us, Nate and everybody, but it's something that I want us to consider hiring someone, a firm or a person to help us. Now, Lori doesn't write any, any grants. Right, she doesn't do the grant writing. No, she doesn't do but the she grant can writing. But she come up with the does, plan. Yeah, she does like a, a, a mapping of the area right. and then, you know, um, start. And modernize proposals. the plan that we currently have and see maybe what needs to be updated or upgraded. We or need to update the, the right. comprehensive plan for sure. Would this replace the comprehensive yeah. plan or no. in addition to it? No, no it has to in in addition. Addition. fix it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wouldn't, wouldn't this be a, like an addition, like Doug just said, it, um, because the um, uh, engineering firm mm -hmm. actually did the comprehensive plan, and this would be an addition, of, um, a, a portion added to it. Am, is that, am I no, correct, I, uh, Chuck? Mm -hmm. a portion. Wendell, Wendell Engineers, Alan Parker, is the one that originally did that document, and then it just failed to get adopted by the board. No, it got adopted. Mm -hmm. Did it get adopted? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Years later. Yeah, it was adopted. 2014. Years ago, yeah. It was adopted 2014, and actually, I just finished reading it. Um, it was adopted, but they wanted certain things changed or something, right? Yeah, the well, it was board written. wanted things done a little bit different. Yeah, they it wanted was, it maps was updated, needed to be updated, right. and things like that. They finished in 2011. I think that's the main problem. If you go through it, some of the thinking of the of the time is not the same now. Um, yes, yeah, so that's I mean that's the main reason. That yeah, my thinking is just that I've been as I've been looking through many of the um, regional economic development plans that were awarded grants by the state. Um, every single one that won or was awarded a grant, they they have already done a lot of prep work, like they have economic <coughs> development experts help them do a lot of the, the pre-planning that needs to be done in order to win a grant. And we haven't done a lot of that stuff. Um, and we're trying to get that done now. But I think if we had a person or a firm or someone who could help do a, a lot of that prep work that we don't really know how to do, <laughs> and we don't really have the time to do it, um, I, I think that will be a good thing for the village. So I'd like us to consider it. Consider it. Where would we get that under the budget? Yeah. Where were do we? Um, I didn't think we put anything in the budget. I don't think, I don't think, think we, we did. Anything in the budget. Well, I, I think I, the I first thing we. I proposed it. Um, I'm not sure if we put that out or not. But under planning, I actually put extra money in just for the. <coughs> for the comprehensive plan. I remember that. And that's yeah. why I didn't remember whether we approved that yeah. or we did. But that was just for a modification. That wasn't for a redo. No, no, that's just. That was just to update it. Well, I don't know if we need to necessarily <coughs> redo it. Or I don't think we should redo it. Well, I mean, then would we just hire the firm that it, it'd probably be easier to hire the firm that did the first one I think so too rather than yeah. get yeah, somebody get new somebody because new. they're going to want to start from square one yeah, and do everything all over again. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, we don't need to do that. No, no I think I no, think it's don't. very expensive to go to yeah. the second one. Because there was Wendell. <laughs> Wendell did the initial one. Right. Well, I don't know if we would. I mean, I don't know if what she would do would even necessarily. I mean, I I would. Um, I mean, I don't know. We I would want to talk to someone first, right. but mm -hmm. I don't know if they would even. I guess they they would take a look at our master plan and then go from there rather than changing the master I think plan. That some things that they need to change because I was <coughs> printing it and then I didn't print the whole chapter that is um, numbers like how many people we have and how many mm -hmm. kids and how and right. these are very important things right. to know all that data uh, what exactly all this all that data because all that is from 2008 right so mm -hmm. that's about 10, ten years, years from there to now so that's that's they have to do that again but the rest of it um, I think most of it just we can update it, mm -hmm. upgrade it. Some, some of the objectives are the same. Some right. of the ob objectives are not. Um, but I mean, definitely, I don't believe we should hire somebody totally new to start all over again. These are expensive plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we need someone to go through and do an inventory of, you know what I mean, buildings that are empty, half empty, at full and capacity, and they do that, and, they do and that. all that kind of stuff. And, and Laurie can do that as well. That's, I mean, Laurie can do, and um, Chuck can help, um, because he can give us all the, the I, I, I definitely think we need to upgrade the, uh, or update um, the well, Maybe we could just, plan. maybe we what could just ask her what services it is she would be willing to provide. I, I gave you the paper. Right. Yeah, th and that's it. That's, that's her. Um, more of the economic planning as, a, as a more than the. Right, I'm not really, yeah. Than the comprehensive view of the village of, of, of The company has a plan. She's going to take it and put it, you know, you, you base your plan on the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. because that's right. the plan of the community. Right. The community mm -hmm. wants to have five stores down there in, in, ten, min in mm -hmm. 10 years. So. She has to apply to, to take that and put that into some kind of a plan. And by the way, what he, uh, Ty is talking about, we are applying for another grant. Uh, thank God we don't have any pictures, so nobody can get upset. Uh, it's for downtown revitalization um, initiative. And the deadline is Wednesday. So that's why we, we're running. Um, well, where can we, where can we now? Agree to move with what she just is proposing. I mean, I'd like to make get this moving. So, uh, Lori proposed three phases. Right. Okay. And the first one, if I'm not mistaken, is about four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But from that point on, it goes a little more higher than that. Yeah. And we don't have anything in the budget to cover that. I mean, I think we can cover the first four thousand. If that. Well, maybe it's something yeah. to think about, if not right now, something to look forward to. I mean, I just, we just, I feel like we're so far behind many of these other communities in doing all of this stuff that you've got to do first to get the economic development plan moving that I'm not really, you know, we're sort of like, well, we're at a disadvantage. Well, I see what you're saying, because what, what, <coughs> what she would, what Lori would provide um, added to the comprehensive plan would be of, of value for achieving these grants. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so can we um, see if she could provide some service and then add that to what we're going to, um, what we have in the budget for Chuck to um, initiate the, the, up, the updating of the comprehensive plan and then they could collaborate and, and finish that document and have that available to us. And well, another, another thing that we can do, and I agree with that, but another thing that we can do is um, there are some companies out there uh, Labella or um, Solutions, uh, yeah, right. Solutions, um, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, right. yes, um, that are providing this service, oh, the same service, same service, and they, like, we ask them to write a grant for a specific thing, they write the grant, they get some money mm -hmm. um, for that specifically, without us having to invest in a new person altogether. Mm -hmm. um, because this year I can't see how we can do anything like that. Okay. So then, how can we go about getting that done so we can move forward with this? Do we just call them and say, like, if we need something, to, they can write the grant. I mean, that's what you told me before. Like Rebello. Yeah. 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 You have to provide them with information, like 
we've gone through this with the bell before and what we did was we provided them information on what projects needed to get done in the mm -hmm. village and then what they did was they put it on their radar and they would send us emails and say you know this is available mm -hmm. this is available this is available right and they charge you for writing each one of the grants and mm -hmm. they'll give you a price for what it would cost to do that right and again we supply them all the information so it's good to have somebody that knows a mm -hmm. little bit about the village at least because then they're already up to speed on mm -hmm. you know the village somewhat so you know. i think that's a valuable service to have but it's still i don't i still don't think it gives us what we need no, I agree. We need a plan of plans rather than just, oh, here's something that we want, let's apply for it. Here's something that we want. I, I feel like we need some, and I don't know how about how to go about making this happen, but we need someone who say, okay, over here is what you should do this, that, and the other thing, and he's, here's all the background information that you need. Do you know what I'm talking about? And that's an economic development. Right. Yes, and, and I don't know how to provide that. I right don't know now. either, but we need to at least be thinking about it. Well, yes. Nate Aldridge providing that somewhat now? Um, a little bit, but that it's really beyond the scope of what he's able to do because he's doing so many other things too, you know what I mean? Okay. He's, he's not just working you're, for us. You're really, though, taking the comprehensive plan because exactly. that, I mean, was, that was the that's whole the, that's community. The I mean, we, we broadcast right. out yeah. surveys and stuff, and right. people fed those surveys back mm -hmm. to us. We had them out by the water department. They mm -hmm. filled them out. They brought them back. The consultant took those and put them in Survey Monkey and provided all the data associated with what the village people wanted mm -hmm. their downtown to look like, what their parks to look like, right. what various it's sections things. they didn't want okay. certain things in certain sections of the village, they wanted right. thing, other things in certain parts of the village. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where you take off from, is that's what the people want their village to look like. Mm -hmm. So then you just take that and parlay that into what kind of grants do we have available to right forward those those opinions of the village residents. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of come back around to the original company, I mean, um, well, well, the guys yeah, who did this, well, window, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of, who had done that for us. And mm -hmm. I, I think that. Yeah, I, think I, that's I was going to say, that sounds like maybe that's maybe more a starting point. To have a clearer view now. But uh, 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 when, some things change. For example, uh, you know, they, uh, the, the stores that are uh, on the perimeter of the town, uh, we, we, everybody looks at them with a different eye now mm -hmm. than they did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but again, Nate, actually the other day, what he said was that the, the comprehensive plan is a living document. Right. So you have it on, the, on your desk. And you yellow out the things that you want to do, and phase one, and then phase two, and then phase three. Right. And if you have an economic development um, person or department, that's even better mm -hmm. because they, he can help you, she can help you. Right. Um, I mean, I think that's, that's the first thing we can do. And um, I don't know how you feel about talking to Laurie again. But that's, I mean, I get, we, remember I gave you her resume and proposal. Are we okay for, for the comprehensive plan at least? Well, I'm, I'm okay with the, with the moving forward having them you know, go through the comprehensive plan using the funds that were set aside to, <laughs> to uh, move that forward. Um, um, I would like to have Lori give us a little bit more if we could, but to add to it. But I don't know. Like you said, I don't know where, where is the board is that if there's going to be enough funding for that portion. I was going to say I'll, I'll go home and I'll look through the budget to really see how much we really right. have to work with mm -hmm. because you know I don't know if we have four thousand in there. Well, I'll look yeah, at to yeah, I mean, that, that that's the the main yeah. thing. Because uh, I mean, to, to make it a whole department is impossible. Right. Uh, but to to hire somebody, that's the main thing. I mean, we, we were very careful with the budget this year. Um, and I don't know how much money extra we have. And and Lori, it's I mean, that's the first eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Then she's going to go to the next step. Right. That's more money. That's more money. Right. right. Um, and I don't want to spend the money and then have it go nowhere. Sure. Right. Exactly. Because that's a waste of money. I, don't I agree. Say. Well, can we then have, have them start the um, review? It, well, should, should the, the planning board then then do the review? Or yeah. 
Is they need to be. Started? Yeah, they need to get it started. Yeah. Well, then they should get it started. Let's ask them then. Let's ask them to So, get how exactly does this work? The planning board works with the window. When, right, when we did the original um, comprehensive plan, um, the planning board worked with Wendell to create a document. Um, my recommendation is you, you get Helen Parker, who did that document. Um, I think last time I called her, it was like 1800 bucks to um, update it again. But I kept calling every time the board would say, well, call and get a number. <laughs> and I'd call and get a number, then a month later would go by, I'd call and get another number, and I don't want to call her. <laughs> And um, then once we get, we, and that's why I put like four or five thousand in the budget for that, because I thought that would be plenty for her to at least update that comprehensive plan. Then we can go anywhere with it, you know. But then, that's probably the first step is to get that updated. Because I agree. Yeah. I'm not quite sure that it was ever adopted. I think that the it attorney was adopted. and it was adopted. There's a resolution. Sue adopted, yeah. didn't want to adopt it because there was a lot of uh, my scribbling was in there because I updated it. And they didn't want it that didn't look professional. They wanted the documents done properly. And that's where we stalled because they wanted 1800 bucks and they didn't have the money to do that. But they have all the, they've already created all those documents. They've got them on their, their files. So it'd be foolish to start all over again when somebody's already, you know, invented the wheel. You know, if we went to somebody else, they'd have to re recreate the document, start all over again. So okay, so, so let's put it on the resolution next. planning uh, updating that. Yeah. And then going from there. Yeah. So let's do that the next time. Do we have to pass a resolution for that? What we want to do. <laughs> to update. I'm lost. To update the comprehensive plan. He's going to ask one though. Once, once, once we get a once we get a proposal it. from them on what it would cost us to do that, then we can um, you'll authorize that. You'll have to call them again, and Chuck. And <laughs> and <laughs> who's going to make that phone call? You guys, so you can actually talk to her. Um, because originally there was, I mean, there were community meetings. I mean, there was a lot that yeah, went into it. Yeah, we have to actually do that. No. We just got to update what we've right. done. No, I know that. Done and, uh, no, that's why I said if you're going to start from scratch, I, all of that stuff is half half. Yeah, half, no, I'm going to do that. Well, my yeah, my intent no in discussing this was yeah. not to redo the master plan. It was just to to get maybe some more specific guidance, I guess. Right. You know. So I fear. Okay. Yeah. So just get it cleaned up. So, and yeah. give us some, and help us with some direction, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you can have a plan, mm -hmm. but you still need someone to help you yeah. go forward. That's why I think it's best for the board of trustees to actually sit and meet with her, <coughs> and maybe entertain other ones too. But at least kind of feel out who you're comfortable working right. with. Right. And the planning board, I probably would love that because right now it's you know. It's I'm not seeing it isn't to entertain anybody else. She was the one who wrote the plan. She knows exactly what she was doing before. It would be the cheapest. Yeah. She's well. probably going to be the cheapest. So I, I don't see any reason to. Uh, and this is something that we really should do and not take another 12 she, months to, to do it. Yeah, I think so. so we'll, she'll have to be made so that she knows that it would be good probably to have her come in so that, so that we could let her know that you know, what we're looking for now, you know. Um, as, as the reasoning we need this is, is for the types of grants that are gonna, are now available t today. But they probably uh, weren't available then. They may, may not have been available, but w in order to, yeah. to achieve and, and win these grants, because they're competitive grants, we need to have the, uh, the type of information in this comprehensive plan that will relate well to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think yeah. that's what needs to be said. Yeah. Is, that, is that okay? That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Uh, who can Thank you. Um, make sure that she can come? Sure. Yep, yep. Uh, are you going to call her? I can, yeah, I can try to find her number. And try to her okay, thank great. You. So if you can do it for next time, thank you very much. That's great. Mayor, uh, some other stuff on yes. old business, please? Um, uh, the testing of the water issues, is that still moving forward? Starting yes. in the middle of the week. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. um, down in our parks, I noticed on May 31st, the fountains went on day before we raised mm -hmm. our rates. Um, I wonder what that was uh, all about. I, I guess they put it on the schedule. I never I told them to, to turn the, the fountains on, and I never told them to stop them, although I don't feel very well that they're running. But um, I mean, are they trickling down? So this is where we are. I followed up, and I noticed around about that, and they said um, 
when they look about how much water that goes from when they turn it on in June till they turn them off in mid September is about a million gallons. And when Con Ag was in here, they went through a million gallons of water per day. Wow. So it really is, I mean, it is a lot, but still when you see how it looks when you come into the village and the fountains are going, um, I'd like to see them continue and I'll be happier when it begins to be able to recycle itself. I think if we were in but a I don't drought, think drought that condition, be yeah, right. if we run so, into the drought right. or into the problems we had in the past, there's been some years, then they do turn them off at that point. Yes, that, and, and I agree with you. Yes, I agree with you. I mean, they look so much better when something comes out, you know, water comes out. <coughs> Anything else? Um, okay, now we have the public portion. Anybody wants to say anything? about the agenda. Yeah, you mentioned about the water fountain. Is there any way you can put a, a timer on it so it's not running from like midnight till four in the morning or something just to, I mean, I, I we don't have a pump there. There's no there. electric in the pump. There's, There's nothing. There's nothing there? No. Okay. If we had a pump, I mean, the timer has to go someplace to, to um, and I don't think there is any place to put a timer there. There's a there's no reason to do spend a lot of money on there because they're going to be refurbished as right. I didn't know if there was power or how yeah. that how that pipe is supplied. Yeah. Is it from a, close to a line where they could put a solenoid in it to have it run a timer? I don't know if anybody's ever looked at that idea, that's all. Yeah. Maybe with the upgrading that might be something yeah, well to consider. Well, well, the upgrade is going to be recycled, recycled so it's going to be recycled, so yeah. that, that, I mean, so be fun. It would be what you'd be spending money now just to take it out um, when, when mm -hmm. they put the, recyc the recycling system in anyhow, so it'd be kind of a waste of funding. Okay, anybody else? All right, so we're closing the, uh, the public portion, and let's go to the executive, we have half an hour. Yeah. Can I just say, I gave the committee reports for the fire department yeah, and for the wastewater in the review. Um, and Phyllis, in were you going to give it on the, on the meeting? On, oh, at the regular meeting? Or during, during the regular meeting? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I just want to say, so Doug knows, that was in there. I did ask about when, well, that annual report, no, where was Sermon Lisa within the, the next two to three weeks. Oh, so okay. We'll have it. Okay. Maybe we should save them now. Read them now. Then, okay. Or just provide them. <coughs> oh, no, I, I think we should read them, but during the regular meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we go to the executive? I hereby make a motion to enter into executive session as authorized by Section 1051F of the public officer's law to discuss contractual matters and to discuss possible promotion of a specific person, 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 person to, I can't get out person. today, I'm sorry, Article 14 of the Civil Service Law. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Yeah. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes, I. Trustee Essek. Yes. We'll be back before 7.30. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay. So we call this meeting to order. At the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Villa of Sufridonia, Julie called and held on the 12th day of June, 2017, at 7.30 p.m. in the second floor, trustee's room, Villas Hall, <coughs> Fredonia, New York, and public notice of the time and place of this meeting has been given to the news media and conspicuously posted in one or more designated public locations in accordance with section 104 of the open meeting law. Whereas members of this board present at this meeting have read the official minutes of the Board of Trustees regular meeting of May 22nd, 2017. Now therefore, be it resolved, this board approves the minutes as entered into the official minutes and be it further resolved that the reading of the minutes be dispensed with. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Essek. Yes. 
We have two reports tonight. We have the police department report for the month of May. Uh, there were 616 incidences, incidences reported, uh, 18 accidents, 36 arrests, 23 vehicle and traffic, and 41 parking tickets issued. Um, the second report is the justice <coughs> report for the month of May. Uh, total parking tickets, fines, and surcharges is $22,901. Total cases, 260, 260. Vehicle and traffic, 93. Criminal, 63. Village ordinances, 67. Civil cases, 4. ABC laws, 33. And that's it for reports. Correspondence was received from Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director of the Resource Center on behalf of the 21st Annual Laurel Run, requesting use of various village street corners to sell a special edition of the Observer on Wednesday, June the 27th, 2017, from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., and to use village streets for the Annual Laurel Run Flag Relay on Friday, July the 14th, 2017. Be it resolved at the request of Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director, on behalf of the 21st Annual Laurel Run, to use various village street corners to <coughs> sell a special edition of The Observer on June 27, 2017, is hereby approved, subject to the direction of the Fredonia Police Department. And be it further resolved, <coughs> the volunteers shall take all precautions, including use of group leaders, and the board requests that the volunteers shall stay off the streets and be restricted to the sidewalks, sidewalk street corners. And be it further resolved, at the request to use various village streets for the 2017 annual Laurel Run on Friday, July 14, 2017, is hereby approved, subject to the direction and escort of the Fredonia Police Department and the village receiving a certificate of insurance in the amount of $1 million, naming the village as an additional insured, which the village has received. Aye. Second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essex. Yes. Correspondence was received from Jamie Rock. History Days Chair, on behalf of Festival Fredonia, requesting use of Barkey Common on Friday, July the, July the 7th, and Saturday, July the 8th, 2017, for the Fredonia History Days. Be it resolved that the request from Jamie Roke, Fredonia History Days Chairperson, on behalf of Festivals Fredonia, to hold the Fredonia History Days Festival, is hereby approved for the use of Barker Common as follows. Friday, July 17, 2017. <coughs> Use of both sides of Barker Common, including the gazebo with access to power for live music to be provided. Closed Church Street from Park Place to Temple and Park Place from Church to West Main Street from 4 to 9 p.m. to allow parking for classic car show. Bag meters for all parking spaces around both sides of Barker Common, Friday, July 7, 2017 until 10 p.m. Use of municipal parking lots behind Main Street businesses for <coughs> overnight parking for both Friday and Saturday to set up two to three porter johns and village hall parking lot for both Friday and Saturday, to place picnic tables in West Barker Common for event use, place trash receptacles and barrels throughout Barker Common. On Saturday, July 8, 2017, use of both sides of Barker Common, including the gazebo with access to power for live music to be provided, and East Barker Common for a living history encampment. Closed Church Street from Park to Temple for food vendors from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. The open container lobby suspended in Barker Common from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. this day to allow for the local wineries participating with this event to offer samples to persons of legal drinking age in conjunction with the sales of their products. Closing of Temple Street from Terrace to Main Street from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. to allow for the history parade. Be it further resolved that the above use of Barker Common and street closings are subject to the direction of the Fredonia Police Department and the Department of Public Works and be it further resolved that the Fredonia Fire Department and Fredonia Police Department be notified of the above closings, and be it further resolved that the request to allow an overnight encampment for a Civil War reenactment from Friday, July 7, 7, 2017 through Saturday, July 8, 2017 is hereby approved on the following conditions. The fire is never left unattended, i.e. overnight fire while sleeping, no combustibles within six feet of the fire. The fire pit should be no more than two feet by two feet. If anyone complains about smoke, all fires must be extinguished. Festival of Fredonia is responsible for all cleanup. And be it further result that this resolution is subject to the receipt by the village of by the village of a certificate of insurance from the Festival of Fredonia Committee showing the village of Fredonia as an additional insured in the amount of at least one million dollars which the village has received. I second. 
Ευχαριστώ Κρίστινα. Ευχαριστώ Λένι. Ευχαριστώ Τζόνας. Ευχαριστώ Ιάτσεν. Ευχαριστώ. Κορεσπόντες was received from Ιβόνι Χένεμπερι, Chairperson Fredonia Farm Festival, requesting the open container law be suspended during the Farm Festival August 24 to 26, 2017. Being resolved that the open container law be suspended during the Farm Festival Friday and Saturday, August 24 to 25, 2017, during the hours of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, August 26, 2017, during the hours of 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the area of East and West Parker Common to allow Liberty Vineyards a contained area to provide sample mm -hmm. wine to the community and visitors of the Fredonia Farm Festival. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linda. Aye. Trustee Joan. Aye. Trustee Essek. Yes. <coughs> a letter of resignation was received from Mark Rockman resigning his position as Villa's trustee effective immediately. I want to read the letter. Um, having served of the on the Fredonia Villa's board for more than five years, and attending board meetings for three years prior to serving, have decided to resign my trustee position effective immediately. As a member of the Independence Party, I realized that I am nearly always a minority vote, and for that reason, as well as others, my vote will have little impact on policy. I appreciate the opportunity to have served and wish to thank those who have supported me. Here it resolved that the resignation of Mark Ruckman as village trustee is hereby accepted effective immediately and the mayor is hereby authorized to write a letter to Mr. Ruckman thanking him for his service to the village of Fredonia. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essek. Yes. Correspondence was received from the secretary of the Fredonia Volunteer Fire Department to a tailored clue to the active roles. Be it resolved that the name of Tyler Kloos, 5 Johnson Street, Fredonia, is hereby added to the active roles of the J.S. Lambert Hook and Ladder Company, effective immediately. Second. Uh, Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linda. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Yes. <coughs> A letter of resignation was received from Paul Luz, member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, resigning his position, effective immediately. A letter dated June 9, 2017 was received um, from me, uh, reappointing, recommending the appointment of E. Lawrence Barger, the Fredonia Zoning Board of Appeals, to fill the unexpired term of Paul Luz. Be it resolved that E. Lawrence Barger, Pine Drive, Fredonia, is hereby appointed to fill the unexpected term of Paul Luz, who resigned his position June 12, 2017, to the Fredonia Zoning Board of Appeals, which terms shall expire April 2018. Second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essek. Yes. We now have the public portion of our meeting. As I said before, um, these are the rules. Please, whenever you want to talk, um, raise your hand. When you recognize, state your name and your address. And then you have two to three minutes to state your case. It will now be a discussion uh, after the closing of the public hearing, of the public portion, uh, we can have an answer for you or uh, a statement. Yes. Yeah. Can you please take this, your hat off? Thank you. What? The hat off. My hat off? Oh, microphone. Oh, OK. I don't need that. I can speak up. Uh, my name is Gus Pockovic. I live at 140 Porter Avenue. Uh, the reason why I was so compelled to come back to this meeting was because last time uh, I was told I would get some sort of an answer to get back to me. No, no, way, no one in the board ever got back to me and stated uh, what, what you know, the solution was going to be for the, uh, for the, the moving private, on the private pile on Eagle Street. And also, uh, long and behold, 10 days later, you're back on the pile moving it again. Okay? with the payloader. So uh, instead, the mayor chose to go to the, new, or the newspaper, asked the mayor for an interview, and somehow she tried to justify using uh, taxpayers' money to move on private property, per se, OK? Um, the village contracts, I would say, the majority of their tree trimming and their, uh, and their chipping work out to begin with. And also, you have the property on Webster Road that you can be dumping now also 
Um, and, and there again, you know, why should the village taxpayers have to pay for, for uh, some fine employee of the village running a loader for an hour and a half, which I saw on that particular day and, and, uh, after I was at the meeting, and it's about 125 bucks an hour, not count, your, not count your employee. So, I mean, that's a big cost. And if you look at that over a 20 year period, okay, for even six months out of the year, for an hour, once a week, comes to about $65,000, which that's making it small. It's probably more than an hour and a half, and it could be up to twice a week. You know, who knows? Now, you know, also, um, you know, you, you, you said you made a statement about it provides compost and fertilizer for the farmer. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, but I don't think tree chippings are, are that good of fertilizer for any farmer. And, and not only that, uh, if that's the case, then you know what? Let, 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 let the person move, move their own stuff instead of the taxpayer paying it. That's almost like, you know, saying that's a theft of service. You're, you're taking the taxpayer's money, putting it in the private sector, taking jobs away from the private sector because they're not able to do the job because you're doing it. You get your contract to treat trimming out. Now, you break the contract up, but yet you still provide a service to that contractor to move, you're moving the pile for him. Okay, so why? You're already contracting it out once. I'm done. As okay, as and then, done. well, I'm gonna finish and then you can, you can come back and answer. Um, Again, village equipment on private property doesn't make it. You know, the village has some uh, great employees. Uh, maybe you guys should look at it and, and managing your workforce properly instead of privately. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Did, did I need the mic? No. Anybody else? From, yes. I just have a comment. Uh, could you please? Can you, can you tell the me your name, please? Using your microphone? very much and I'm not hard of hearing. You, you need to show us a courtesy by speaking loud. I didn't realize you, you didn't hear me. I'm very sorry, of course. Pardon? I did not realize you're not, you cannot hear me. I'm very sorry, yes. of course, yes. We want to hear everything you say. Thank you. Thank you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I'm not sure if you want that. <coughs> yes. I don't know if I need a microphone either, but we'll try. No. The microphone, is, the microphone is for the uh, for the benefit of the television. I'm Mike Ferguson, One Venture of Circle in Fredonia. Uh, tonight we're representing the Northern Chautauqua Pickleball Association, of which one third of our membership is here tonight to thank Tom Pataglia and Roger Pecos and, and the village for uh, beginning, come on in, uh, beginning the project at, at Russell Joy Park. Uh, we're certainly appreciative of the direction that it's begun. Um, and we also want to address some of the issues that have been brought up with regards to coexisting with other sports. Um, number one, this is being added to tennis courts and sports facilities across the country. I've spoken with Fredonia High School, I've spoken with Brockton High School, uh, I've spoken with others. When you look at the markings of a high school basketball court, seven different sports markings are on those courts. And having been to, in fact, I think we got a basketball official here, I haven't seen a, an athlete run out of bounds yet because they were confused by, by the lines. Um, the lines that we are putting down are the same lines, that, not that we're putting down, but that the village is going to do they are the same exact lines that are being used to extend the sport in other areas. There's no permanent nets. We take, set our nets down and take them up. We're not asking for any sport to move on. In fact, there are 16 tennis courts within the village boundaries. And it, well, if you include the, uh, the county hall as well. And there, up to the other day, only uh, there were zero pickleball courts. It's the fastest growing sport around. Just in the last three weeks since we started play, over 130 residents and pickleball players have begun to play the sport. And during that time, 13 tennis players have played side by side next to us. Um, on a national level, this is the fastest growing sport in America. And unfortunately, I'm a tennis player myself. We have several other pickleball players who are tennis players. It's just the nature of the beast. We're not asking to move. Uh, courts, or we're not asking to take courts away from folks. Uh, we had put down a plan for eight courts. In fact, we saved the village 
um, almost $1,000 in paint by being able to use the marking paint that is used for the street, which again is being used by parks and recreation company, uh, 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 divisions throughout the United States. So it's not something that uh, we've come up with on our own. This is a process and a procedure that's being used across the country. So we ask that those courts be completed for us um, as planned. We're being told that that plan would move forward. And once again, uh, when you look at the number of people who've already used the park, we have also volunteered to work with the youth program and teach the sport free of charge to the summer youth program, senior programs, and others. Okay. Every school in Chautauqua County is now teaching it as part of their sports, mm -hmm. and it's also becoming a division uh, NCAA club sport as well. So we ask for your continued support. We're appreciative, but it, just as a last example, because I want to keep it under my two minutes, Saturday, we had over 42 people come to play on two courts. We had to make temporary courts uh, just to be able to uh, have all of our play people play. So we pick up after ourselves. We're very grateful for uh, the park that we have. And we are working on a pickleball day that will be free to the community, as well as introducing, we've had several basketball players come over that, uh, that have learned how to play as well. So we appreciate your continued support. And if you have any questions, <coughs> that's why we're here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes, please. Uh, Todd Prophet, uh, James Place, just here for another update. It's been three weeks since we were here last. Um, when we were last here, we talked about one of the issues. I know this is not something that can be resolved this week, but one of the things that, that we that will give at least our street relief is flushing the lines. I know we were waiting until we get some testing done, so I want to know where we are. And if we can get those lines flushed as soon as possible, that would be a big help. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, Roger Britz, 1900 Street, Fredonia. Just have a couple quick questions that you I'm just going to blur about today. Um, first of all, I'm interested in how many positions are still available in the village, and have you had time to fill any of those positions yet? The other question I have for you tonight is about a year ago, back in June, and I'm answering a question for friend of mine on Facebook right now, wants to know that there was a dog waste station that was donated to the village that apparently was approved to be put in the park. It's now been over a year and that item still has not been put in the park. Does anyone have any information on that or know anything about that? Um, okay. Yeah, I'll, we'll answer. I'll yeah. Oh, you're just going to yeah. go all the yeah. answers. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess my third thing I kind of wanted to touch base with you tonight about was uh, regarding this dumping on private property. I, I'm a little concerned about that also, and I'd like to hear some of your Thank answers. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, Emily, I think, uh, no, it's for the TV. They can't hear okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily Ivey at 29 Risley Street in Fredonia, and I'm a member of the Chautauqua Tennis Club, and I just want to uh, speak out in support of keeping one of the tennis courts without other lines on it. I have had the unfortunate opportunity of trying to play on a tennis court with pickleball lines, and it's practically impossible to know what to do. It's very, very confusing, and I just think it's fair to leave I understand the problem with the pickleball people, and I'm really sorry about that, but I think that the park should have a basketball <coughs> court, a pickleball court, and a tennis court available for people who want to play. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? That was a lot. <laughs> well, yes. We would like to mention that there are 16 tennis courts in the community. Thank you. Of yes. which we're not taking two of the Thank system. you. Yes. Okay. Um, well, anyone else? Thank you. I thought you wanted to speak. Is any oh, I thought, you, I thought you wanted to speak. I'm sorry. No, I'll, if you would like to stop after you can answer it, I have more okay. questions. All right. <coughs> well, we're closing the, the public portion. And now let's take the things <coughs> from the beginning. First of all, about your question, the, the private uh, property. The truth is, of course, that you went to the paper, and after you went to the paper, they called me. That's how I answered. Well, um, I want to from the who also, you know, that, that was, until I saw it, the, 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 after, after the, after that, I saw that, this, that, this that, isn't a discussion. That, yeah. Just let me, let me answer, yes, okay. So um, 
so everybody understands what's going on. The brush for our, from our DPW uh, is being taken to Mr. Privitera's backyard. This is not dumping anything anywhere. He's giving us a service free of charge to leave there the, the brush, and then he uses it from time to time, yes, from time to time uh, when there is compost. Now, sometimes this brush falls on the street. When it falls on the street, that's dangerous. So we send a front loader to push it back. That's the whole story. It's true. We can take it, we can give it to somebody to dispose it for us. That is going to cost the village money. So we're saving money to the taxpayers. It's true. It's true that we can take it to the other place about 10 miles up the street. That doesn't save us any kind of money. We need to have somebody take it there. We need to have to, to, to pay for this, um, uh, for, the, for the gas for the, for the car to take it up there. The thing, the, it's real simple. He's given us a part in his property. He doesn't, uh, we don't have to pay him anything. It's about, quarter of a mi about three quarters of a mile away. Plain and simple, that's it. Then there's, uh, there's no other, there's nothing else really there. So uh, at the end, no. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a the paper that was written. That's exactly what I answered. Oh, yeah. Yes. So everybody should understand. Actually, we're saving money by allowing he, this gentleman allow us to put our brass over there. Otherwise, you have to pay somebody to come and pick it up, or you have to pay somebody to give us his backyard, or you have to take it to our land that is about how much. How far away is that? Yeah, probably eight, ten miles. About eight to ten miles. It's so easy. That's it. That's the whole story. We're not dumping anything anywhere. The gentleman knows exactly what we're doing. Now I know you have a property in the back. I, I know the whole story. It's not. It's not going to happen to, to uh, you know push it over to your property. So that's about that. Um, second, about Carroll Avenue. Um, we, the testing is going to be done mid this week. All the, um, the flushing of the, the water uh, is, is being done. The two weeks, remember we said two weeks after the flushing? Two weeks are mid this week. Yeah. So we're going to have the testing mid of this week. Okay? Thank you. Um, and now about this. This is the best problem, see? This is not really a problem. Uh, <laughs> I, I understand everybody's position. Um, what I want to say is that everybody should have the opportunity to play. I think that part of the problem <laughs> with the lines were the lines were yellow and wide and really not according to what the, the pickleball um, standards are, which is like a light blue as I understand it, and um, uh, two and a half inch wide instead of how much wider is this line. Um, I just don't want to say to anybody, just move to another court, to, to another court. I think we should all be able, and you should be able, to resolve that between you. Yes, there are more pickleball players, which means that probably next year you're going to come back here and ask the schools and, the, and, and all the other tennis courts to be lined for pickleball. So, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, the more you are, I mean, this year you said only the two. Next year, maybe you're going to say all oh, the other two and the other two. And, and it's great that you, you play. Every, that, that's great. Everybody gets exercise. Uh, but we all taxpayers, and I think, uh, you know, we should all be allowed to play. To me, personally, and I don't know where the board, uh, board is going to go, to have one court live the way it is is not a big deal. We're going to take take care, actually, of the other. We're going to take out the, the yellow lines, as I understand it, right? If, this is, if, if that is a huge issue, I have no problem with the DPW to change the color of the lines. Uh, the only thing I, I will say to Ms. I, I appreciate the fact that you're a tennis player, but I have, this has to be become, this is going to be become a multi-use facility because of the demand for play. Um, as Mr. Ferguson stated, everybody gets used. I know it's going to be tough, but you're going to have to be used to different lines. Brand new football facility in Dunkirk, what they have there. 
has soccer lines on it. All right. I, if I had, uh, does anybody have like eighty thousand dollars to get me to use? No. Okay. I wish I could. You're right. I wish I could put in a separate pickleball court. I cannot. All right. The budget I work with coming into this year, just for my supplies for, for kids in the program, due to the fact that we have infrastructure issues, due to the fact that we have to work on the sewer treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant. Chief Myers is going to need new police vehicles. All right. I'm not going to get money to put in a separate pickleball court. I have to stretch my budget to give everybody a chance to use that park. This, these folks came in, they made a presentation to the board. The board of trustees kicked it to the Parks and Recreation Commission and in, our Febu in their February meeting, they voted to go forward with this project lining the, the tennis courts and the basketball courts, mind you. The pickleball folks are the ones that are going to have to move. If there's tennis players in the morning where we're not using, where basketball's not being used, they go to the basketball side. Now, if you went up to Russell Joy Park right now, I will tell you there is probably two dozen kids playing basketball and not a lot of people playing tennis. When he goes there for the afternoon, for the evening sessions of the pickleball session, then they can go to that side. The burden is on the pickleball players now. It is something they have, they have to deal with other lines too. All right? We will examine, yes, a different color, no problem. Uh, the next lines will be thinner, yes, no problem. But it's, got to, it's going to be something that everybody's going to, I want the park to be busy, all right? We all want the park to be busy. It creates less problems. We all know, we hear the stories about heroin ep uh, epidemic around here, where if we have an abandoned park, that is going to be a place where, where bad things happen. The more people are there using it, Thank the better. You. And Thank that's you. why we're going to move forward. Thank you, Tom. Um, I just, uh, I think uh, the court that I played on that had pickleball, they had originally had the yellow lines, the wide yellow lines, which were really obtrusive trying to play. And they did change them to the light blue and, and the small and the thinner lines, and it was easier. And I'm not sure that street paint is the best paint to use. It's not. The they, 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 they assure me that they didn't use street paint. It is asphalt paint now. It is it's, it's an asphalt court. Asphalt. It is not. It is it mm -hmm. is safe to use. Department of water Department of Public Water Based Paint. The Department of Public Works would not put something down that and is going to. Uh, it is, the, it is an asphalt paint. Now that was something you know when we have it resurfaced. That you know that is part of what we pay for to resurface. Now if you if you do want if that's everybody's solution is to keep one tennis court like that. Is that what you, what you would like me to do going from when we resurface that facility to wipe out the one tennis court and then put it in pickleball only? Or would you like to have two tennis courts there? I would like to have two tennis courts there so people can play and then people can share. I, I, you know, I, I really don't think it should you know, be so. Uh, the, the thing is simple. We all adults, uh, I think we can come to some solution. Let's make the, the lines thinner and a better color and take it from there. I don't want to displace any players to go to say, you know, there's other tennis courts. There are, yes. But this is, we all pay the same taxes. That's, that's my opinion. So um, with that, I want to give it to the board if you want to say anything. Yes, I, I feel they, they should be multi-use uh, facilities. Uh, we all <laughs> need to learn to play well together and, and share. Um, I hope this all works out. I don't want anybody to be angry, but in the same sense, I want everybody to be able to utilize all the facilities that we can utilize to the best of their capacity. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm thrilled when I go over to the park and I see a lot of people over there. So that's what we want. We want a lot of people using the parks as much as possible. So the best way to do that is to share. So what do you want to do? Keep going the same way as we go? Or yeah, just repaint the lines, you know, in a different color and thinner and see if that works and hopefully that'll work. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I have a gentleman uh, came to my office before and he is the president of uh, the ten Setakwa Tennis Association and he is uh, very much willing to discuss the issue um, so you can come to some kind of, uh, you know, 
good decision for everybody. So everybody can have a good time. Hopefully this will be a good summer. And <clears throat> the last question, I suppose, is about the village positions. We still have the same positions up. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. We still have the same positions as we had before, except the, the attorney that is, uh, is filled. We're looking for qualified um, individuals to fill them. And hopefully, we're going to have that done quite um, as soon as possible. As um, about the dog thing, the store closed down. And I have no idea what happened to it. I know I, that I, the store is closed. I, answer, I, I believe that they, they said it was purchased and it was delivered to the DPW building. And it's been sitting I will check on that. Okay. I will check, yes. I, 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 I've oh. spoken to uh, Jen Merrill, who takes care of the parks, and okay. I do believe they do have it. I don't know why it isn't up yet, but I won't. I won't. Okay. You will ask, <coughs> and ask him to... Yes, to it was supposed to be up. put up this spring. But the, gentle, the gentleman who was supplying it claimed he would supply, continually supply the, the, the bags and things that would go with that. Well, with that gentleman not there, there's no one to do that. He was the one, he... He, he was going to maintain it. He was going to maintain it. Um, it, was a, it, it was, he was a agreeing to, to have it put it there as, as he would maintain it and he would or he would make sure that the, the bags were supplied can, can, and everything can like that. Can you find out how much but is the maintenance, no like how much are the, the bags that we use in there? That's, that's the main thing because if, if it's not a big amount and it's, it's good to keep the, the park clean, I mean we can discuss it again. So I will speak to somebody from the DPW and I will yes. get back to everybody at the next meeting Thank with you. the report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it does, right? Did I answer mm -hmm. everything? Yeah. All right. Um, let's go to the resolutions. Be it resolved that Justin Barolo, Summer Street, Fredonia, Ariel Rivera, West 2nd Street, Dunkirk, Alexander Zajewski, Cleveland Avenue, Fredonia, and, um, August Grazier, Seymour Street, Fredonia, are hereby hired as seasonal laborers to work with the Department of Public work at an hourly rate of $9.70, effective June 19, 2017, subject to civil service rules and re regulations, and with no other benefits to be given. I second. Trustee Christina? Yes. Trustee Linda? Aye. Trustee Jones? Aye. Trustee Essen? Yes. <coughs> Be it resolved that the village pay $4,881 for its annual 2017-2018 membership dues to the New York State Conference of mayors and municipal officials. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linda. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Essex. Yes. Thank you. Um, it resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia, Chautauqua County as follows. Section 1. It is hereby determined that the Board adopting this resolution has declared itself to be the lead agency under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CCOR, and the regulation promulgated there under for purposes of determining the environmental impact of the project described in section three thereof and completed a coordinated review to the extent required by law. Section two, it is hereby determined that the project described in section three thereof is a type two action which is to be determined will not have any significant adverse impact upon the environment as provided in six New York CRR part 617.5 C2 of said regulation. Section 3, the project which is the subject of this resolution is described as follows. Water waste treatment plant upgrades and improvements including equipment replacement. Section 4, this resolution shall, shall take effect as immediately. I'm second it. Oh, okay. Doug, Doug, Doug has um, to second. Trustee Jones, voting? I'm sorry, I have to second. Second. Yeah. Okay, Trustee you. Jones. Yes. Yeah. Trustee Christina. Yeah. Voting. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Essex. Yes. Most interesting. The people from Jones. I know. Yeah. Yeah. The resolution was therefore declared <laughs> duly adopted by four to zero <laughs> vote. Thank you. Whereas in compliance with Part 617 of the Implementing Regulations pertaining to Article 9, <coughs> State Environmental Quality Review Act, or CEQRA, of the Environmental Conservation Law, the Fredonia Village Board has reviewed the Capital Improvements Program proposed for the filtration plant 
in the village of Fredonia, and whereas the completion of these improvements are subject to the New York State Envi Environmental Quality Review Act, and whereas the proposed project has been determined to be a Type 2 action under SEQR Section 617.5C, in all the project, in that all the project involves the replacement, rehabilitation, or reconstruction of a structure or facility in kind on the same site, and whereas in accordance with the State Environmental Quality Review Act, Type 2, actions have been determined to not have a significant impact on the environment or are otherwise precluded from environmental review under Conservation Law Article 8. Now therefore be it resolved that the Fredonia Village Board hereby determines that the proposed project is a Type 2 action and therefore is not anticipated to result in any significant adverse environmental impact and in accordance with SEQR, no SEQR determination, of significance, mm. EIS or finding statement is required. Trustee Jones, for yeah. uh, Trustee Christina, oh, yeah, second. Wait, 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 <laughs> second. Sorry, Trustee Jones, Trustee Christina, yes. Trustee Linden, aye. Trustee Asik, yes. The resolution was therefore de declared fully adopted by four to zero vote. A resolution authorizing, subject to permissive referendum, the reconstruction of and improvements to elements of the water treatment and distribution facilities in and for the village of Fredonia, Chautauqua County, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of 1,600,000 and authorizing the issuance of a of $1,600,000 serial bonds of said village to pay the cost thereof. A copy of bond resolution is attached to and made part of these minutes. Second. Christy Jones. <coughs> yes. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Essig. Yes. The resolution was therefore declared duly adopted by four to zero vote. A resolution authorizing, subject to the permissive referendum, wastewater treatment plant upgrades and improvements in and for the village of Fredonia, Chautauqua County, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of four million eight hundred thousand and authorizing the issuance of four million eight hundred thousand serial bonds of said village to pay the cost thereof. A copy of bond resolution is attached to and made part of these minutes. Second. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Essex. Yes. The resolution was therefore thereupon declared duly adopted by four to zero vote. Be it resolved that the scheduled meetings of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia for the period of July 2017 through December 2017 as set forth and attached to these minutes is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the village clerk is hereby authorized to publish said notice in the observer and to mail copy of said schedule to WDOE Radio, the Jamestown Post Journal, and the Buffalo News. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essek. Yes. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredoni desires to retain the engineering services of News Bomber and Clark Incorporated of Buffalo, New York, related to the investigation of the failed stucco system, uh, finish system at the fire hall per their proposal dated May 19, 2017, and whereas said proposed agreement between Nussbaumer and Clark Incorporated and the Village of Fredonia has, has been presented to this board to perform the scope of services as follows. Design services, task one, the update the report lump sum of uh, $2,900. Task two, uh, construction documents, the repairs, uh, lump sum of $3,300. Task three, bidding and award of the lump sum uh, for $1,800 or a to total uh, for the design services is $8,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved that said agreement with News Palmer and Clark Incorporated is hereby approved to perform said services at a total cost of $8,000 and the mayor is authorized to sign and, uh, and, and uh, sign said agreement on behalf of the village of Fredonia. Second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essex. Yes. Be it resolved that the mayor is hereby authorized to apply for a Main Street Technical Assistance Grant. If approved, the village share will be $1,000. I second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essex. Yes. Be resolved that Douglas Bunge 
of one, one, uh, 170 West Main Street, Fredonia, <coughs> New York, and Josh Seibart, uh, 8965 Schimler Road, Fredonia, are hereby appointed as part-time dog control officers for the village of Fredonia at an annual stipend of $3,000 each with no other benefits except mileage at the federal rate. Mr. Bunge and Mr. Seibart are to submit a written voucher uh, detailing the mileage. Second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essex. Yes. Be it resolved that the following agreements are hereby approved for the 2017 summer band concerts scheduled to be held in the gazebo from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in Barker Commons to wit. June 28, 2017, Rustic Ramblers. July 5, 2017, Casadega Area Band. July 12, 2017, Kokomo Time. July 19, 2017, Rain Date. July 26, 2017, New Horizons Band. August 2, 2017, TPT, Mike Tuccio. August 9, 2017, Dave Galando. August 16, 2017, Exit 59. August 23rd, 2017, Farina and Friends. August 30th, 2017, Dixie Kratz. Be it further resolved that the total amount to be spent for all the band concerts shall not exceed the sum of $3,675. And be it further resolved that the mayor is hereby authorized to sign said agreements on behalf of the village of Fredonia. Second. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Esser. Yes. Be it resolved that upon recommendation of Thomas Pataglia, Director of Fredonia Pomfret Recreation Department, the following individuals are hereby appointed to the seasonal positions for the 2017 Summer Recreational Program, effective immediately. Caleb Crampton, 30 Birchwood Drive, 970 an hour. Brianna Garland, 53 Seymour Street, 970 an hour. Karen McCoyak, 194 Temple Street, 970 an hour. Angela McCoyak, 194 Temple Street, 970 in an hour. Jacinda Mikas, 177 Liberty Street, 970 an hour. Nicholas Miller, 124 Seymour Street, 970 an hour. Nick Nosek, 3337 East Main Road, 970 an hour. Michael Pucci, 16 Birchwood Drive, 970 an hour. Jeremy Ross, 70 Brigham Road, 970 an hour. Lindsay Seddon, 9684 Adams Road, 970 an hour. Kayla Sullivan, 71 Cleveland Avenue, $11 an hour. Bailey Tarnowski, 10412 Chestnut Road, 970 an hour. Adam Ozura, 3692 East Main Road, 970 an hour. Sarah Zinni, 143 Lambert Avenue, 970 an hour. I second. Christy Christina. Yes. Christy Linden. Aye. Christy Jones. Yes. Christy Essie. Yes. We have one more resolution, oh, but geez. until um, Eric comes, do you want to give us a report from your visit to the West Shore of Shooting Park? Um, as part of the wastewater and the um, water treatment plant, I went up to see the, the water plant. Um, plant really looked well, was running good. Um, it definitely clean, tidied up a bit, and the holding tanks were very clean. I could now see the bottom of the tanks, and I said it was the first time in the four plus years that I'd been assigned to that committee that I was able to see the bottom of the plant. So the turbidity is much improved up there. Um, the rate was 0 0.07, which is extremely good for that. And the blankets of the tank beds were also clear. Um, the plant overall is running good. I did inquire um, by Tom Kolsky, who is one of the workers up there in regards to possibly had mentioned someone that w may be able to help Fredonia out there. Um, and so I have that name, it's Paul Snyder, mm -hmm. and with a phone number, and if we give them a call, they would be willing to do. I also was, I inquired when our annual water um, report would be coming out, and I was advised that Chris Suma should he have the annual water quality report done within the next two weeks, uh, two to three weeks. Then I went down to the wastewater plant. That also, that just amazes me. It's an amazing plant. Um, it's really interesting to go and tour. It is extremely neat and clean. 
Um, the floors, walls, everything remains really good. Um, Betsy Sly, who recently retired, is still helping us out um, on a weekly basis as needed. Um, the staff is rotating, they're covering the plant, they do on a rotation basis, so it's covered 24-7. Um, the one of the things that I did say that because we are down one worker there because of some health issues, that may be another area that we should look at considering filling the position besides the overall supervisor. Um, I'm also the liaison, as is um, Trustee Linden with the fire department. We went to the um, executive meeting that is held with the volunteers and the paid fire, firemen. Um, so it really, uh, you learn a lot there. The building repairs are really moving forward very good. The engineering firm has completed the restudy for the repairs and the presentation to the board of trustees and the money has already been approved for the repairs through the capital project. The equipment, the tanker, which was proposed by Lieutenant um, Ryan has been approved for the upcoming year, 2017 um, through 2018. Um, half of it will be donated, the total cost will, half of it will be denoted by the volunteers, the other half will be through um, our capital project. One of the things we discussed is perhaps, um, you know, we're trying to encourage that we use local vendors. So last year, the coming plan in Jamestown graciously donated the engine for, what was it, engine? 15. 15. Um, we don't ask them to do that, but I think we should look into um, maybe offering them um, the contract, see what we can do with them so that we use a local um, business. Um, the mobile phones have not been installed yet. They're here, but they haven't been installed, and that's due to a scheduling um, issue with the vendor. It's not on our part. Um, they have a lot of um, mobile phones to install, so eventually we'll get it. Um, the equipment, um, the hosing testing is completed and that's been done by the DPW also. It, I mean, it also has been flushing the hydrants. Um, I did inquire, I asked him about any replacement of the hose, how do we do that, and that is all, has already been put in through our supply line, through the budget. We also had authorized um, 10 turnout gears, which is required every 10 years you have to replace the turnout gear. Um, because they were able, they had some money left over and they got 13 gears instead. All is here except for their boots and the helmets. And as soon as those um, arrive, then they will go according to the ones we have to do. A reminder that June 10th through the 16th is designated as the annual fund drive. So the fire departments and mailings have already gone out to the community and they will also follow up with the door to door. Um, our next meeting will be the 27th of this month, and that's it. Of course. I thought we were to be on the agenda for tonight about the property on Christmas Drive. I'm Carol Joyce McNamara Angelo, and this is my husband, Joe. He has been up here three different times trying to find gifts, but they said that we would be on the agenda today. This is a very important item to have been on the agenda tonight, and we weren't. So I waited till everybody did their thing, and I am bringing it up. I, li I live at 7 Birchwood Drive. I've been there since 75. Next door to me is a property owned by the Assembly of God Church, tax-free. The reverend and his wife, he retired, and they moved to Jamestown. The house has been vacant for over three years. There's no heat in it, and it's getting very dilapidated looking. And Mr. LaBarbera, will attest to what I'm going to say. He's one of the people that I also, with my husband, 
talked with him about this, the grass was at least that high. Now, maybe Second Street in Dunkirk, some Willow Road or someplace where they don't mow their lawn, okay? And it took weeks upon weeks to have that grass taken care of. I even suggested to maybe your secretary that I would withhold payment of my taxes. Okay? Now, it has all been mowed and, you know, they didn't have to get any sheep or anybody in there, any animal life. But at the same time, it still looks terrible because it's all brown there. The house, the, the eave troughs are hanging off or missing, okay? Now, I'm here tonight to ask the board and you, Mayor Landis, what is the status of the Assembly of God's property in Fredonia? They have three pieces of property. The, they no longer have the church. That's empty. The white house next door has never been lived in, and the one next door to me hasn't been lived in for over three years, and it looks terrible. My property, our property, is worth thousands of dollars. What are you going to do now to make this move quicker? Mayor? <laughs> That's a good question. Thank you. Anyways, thank you. I, I know, and I drove by there, oh, so I know exactly where it is. Yeah. We had at least 15 neighbors call yes. or come and approach the problem. The, the problem is this, and I can answer that, why we're so late with this. Because in order for us to give the order for somebody to go and cut the grass, we have to go through all this. We have to go and pass a resolution. If there is no meeting, there is no resolution. That's, that was the problem. Two weeks in a row, we didn't have a meeting. And from before, right? That's the, the, and, and that's why it took so long. I do apologize for that. I don't know the, st the status of the, of the, of the properties. Uh, but for the grass, I do apologize. It took more than I would want, really. Uh, but, but I. You know, we claim that taxes are being paid, well, they're tax-free, and there are three properties involved. I couldn't agree more than for you. Okay, yes. but they are paying their water bill. That I did find out. I even told some of these gentlemen, pardon, Ms. Christina? Or? I didn't know anything about this. this is the oh, I've ever well, heard of this. it's quite a serious problem. I told these people that in Silver Creek, they have enough beautiful Assembly of God Church, which one of them could have contacted and got some information about who to talk to. You know, you have to go through quite a few steps when you want to accomplish something. And the next thing was, okay, besides this, there's one in Westfield, right on the main road, beautiful one. I've even I'm, I'm not up sure. there once in a while. Yeah. I'm not sure if they connected in any ways. I'm not sure if our officer can, can call them. So I um, have suggested to Mr. O'Barber that a picture be taken of that piece of property and it be put on the front page of the observer. He beat me to it. We didn't put it in the paper because we've taken kind of care of it, haven't we, Mr. O'Hara? You've been very nice about it. But he did take a picture of it. Also, the homes that are turned into student rentals on Birchwood Drive, all but two buildings, are disgraceful. And you know what the answer always is? They're absentee landlords. They live in New York. Well, to my knowledge, all you have to do is call them, send them a violation, 
but you also need to send them a picture of the properties that they own. The curtains or the blankets that they put up at the windows are blowing in the breeze. There's trash here, there, and everywhere, and they're not being taken care of. And they're, they're not the only ones. Here. And they're not the only ones in the community. So we I want you to look problems. into it. And I hope that my husband and I will see progress in our favor. Okay. Believe me, you I want it more than you. You know, it's wonderful to put yes. a fence up around the park, but I think our building inspectors, Monaco, you're retired now. <laughs> yeah, I've dealt with him. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> oh, you, you'll never do again to me what you did, will you? <laughs> and there's work to be done. I hear there's a home on Hill, I think it's Hillcrest Drive, that is just full of cats, dead cats, alive cats, and the neighbors have all complained about it, and nothing has been done. Okay, there's well, one on you know, it's, it's easy. I understand mm -hmm. the frustration, and believe me, not only I share it, I have more, because everybody can come here and say all this. That's fine. However, there are some objective problems that we have to go through. Well, uh, we I have understand that I own property also on another part of Fredonia. Yes, uh, and the objective problems are we, are, we don't have full staff. Mr. O'Barbara is by himself pretty much. And, and we, job, we got it done. Yes, and everybody, it's easy to come and say, I pay my taxes. Well, we're using the money as best as we can. Uh, we, we know these problems. We're trying to pass some new regulations for all the rentals. It's not easy, because believe me, these people who don't, we don't know, we can find them. What happens is, the moment you push something, a new regulation, they're gonna fill this room, pushing back and saying that we cut their, their, their livelihood. So we are trying to pass some new regulations. We want to see the, the villas look good. Of course we want to see it the village look good. And uh, uh, I am going to look into this. I have no idea what the Assembly of God um, yeah, is. All of your board have, should have looked at that house. We looked at it for months, my property, my husband's property. And yes. that's not very good. No, you know, it's not. I, our, our home is beautiful. And then we look over at Five Birchwood, and it's a sight to behold. People would go by and see us out and approach us about the house. And I said, well, there's legalities that have to be taken okay. care of. But I said, I'm kind of tired waiting for over three years for something to be done because there's been no heat in that house. So thank the you. Lord only knows what's growing inside. But thank you for letting me speak. Absolutely. I appreciate My pleasure. That. Thank you. Okay. One more idea. Whereas part of the Village Barker Common Grant requires a survey be completed and forward to New York State, and whereas the vi village solicited bids for the preparation of the survey, now whereas Woodbury slash Petro survey was the low bidder for the project, now therefore the village awards the job of this survey to Woodbury Petro surveying at a cost not to exceed two thousand three hundred dollars. I'll second that. Trustee Christina. Trustee Linda. Aye. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Essen. Yes. Did you want that? Yeah. Are we all done? Yep. Can I have it? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Trustee Christina. Trustee Linda. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Essen. Thank yes. you very much for coming. Mm -hmm.